All right, we're going to go through the problems that are called in-class homework that's on Moodle. All right, so the first one says we have 15.9 milligrams of sodium carbonate. All right, so 15.9 milligrams of sodium carbonate. All right, so on your list, your flashcards, however you are memorizing your polyatomic ions, carbonate must be memorized as CO3 minus two. Your periodic table, sodium's in the first column, and so you have to know everything in the first column is plus one. And so you have to know that that is Na plus. So this is what you're gonna be given a periodic table. You'll find sodium, it's in the first column. It is plus one. All right, and so to make a compound, all compounds are neutral. So if you have a minus two, you have to have a plus two. And so sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. All right, so that is the formula. All right, and now you label each one as an ionic or molecular compound. When you make your compound from ions, it is ionic. All right. All right, so the next one over here. We have 20 grams of acetic acid. Uh, milligrams of acetic acid. All right, so you have to know ic acid. What you have to know about ic acid is that it comes from eight. So you know, anytime you have an ic acid, it comes from the eight. So that came from acetate. Now you recognize that that is one of your polyatomic ions that you have to have memorized. So that is your uh, C2H3O2 minus. That is your acetate. All right, and you also have to know to get an ic acid, that means it starts with an H plus. And so your acetic acid, to be all acids are neutral, all acids are aqueous, all acids start with H. This has a minus one, this has a plus one, and so now it is neutral as HC2H3O2. So that is acetic acid. Uh, the question uh, of the ionic versus molecular here is difficult to answer at this point because... Uh, acetic acid is a weak acid, and all weak acids are called molecular, all right? But it was made from the ions, H plus and the acetate, and so I would expect most of you to put ionic. Now, next test, we will know our strong acids and our weak acids. The strong acids are ionic, the weak acids are molecular, all right? For this test, it's an acid. I will accept either answer, molecular or ionic, for any acid. All right. Okay, so then that yields 13.7 milligrams. So that yields 13.7 milligrams of sodium acetate. All right, so again, acetate's right there. And sodium was Na plus. And so to get a neutral compound, that is NaC2H3O2. That is sodium acetate. And that is made with ions, a metal ion with the acetate ion. So this is 100% ionic. All right. And so then it also yields carbon dioxide, and it doesn't give the number of milligrams, All right? So we have our carbon dioxide, so I won't even write that. So the, so we don't know how many milligrams of CO2. So CO2, carbon dioxide, everyone knows that. That is two nonmetals. That is a molecular compound. Uh, and then finally, you get 3.0 milligrams of water. And water to nonmetals, uh, this is a molecular.
compound. All right, so now the question is to label each. So we gave the formula. We labeled each as ionic or molecular. All right, so the next question in part C is calculate the mass of carbon dioxide. So we need to find out how many milligrams of CO2. And so in order to get this answer correct, you have to know the law of conservation of mass for all chemical reactions, not nuclear reactants, reactions, uh, the mass of reactants equals the mass of products. All right, so you simply add up your reactants. So over here, we had 15.9 and 20.0. Oh, we didn't balance the equation yet, did we? All right, we also have to balance the equation. So we had 15.9 and 20.0. As our reactants, the products, we had 13.7. The CO2, we don't know, X milligrams for CO2, and the water had 3.0. All right, and so we know that the left side equals 35.9, so we have to have 35.9 on the other side. All right, and so we have right now 16.7 plus the mass of CO2. And so you simply have to do the subtraction. So subtract your 16.7 and you got your 0.2, you got your 19.2 milligrams. So you get your calculator, you don't have to actually do the math, you just push the buttons on your calculator, but you have to give the correct sig figs. Note that when I added these three sig figs and these two sig figs and got three sig figs, that's the wrong rule. The rule is you added one decimal with one decimal to give one decimal. Make sure you know it's decimal places for adding and subtracting. All right, and so when you did this and you did a subtraction, one decimal minus one decimal, you get one decimal. All right, so now we have to balance the... Reaction, so that's our milligrams of CO2. All right, so we had our sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. We had our acetic acid, HC2H3O2. All right, and then our products, I would be going this way, but I don't have enough room. Our products uh, is sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2 plus CO2 plus H2O. All right, so when we follow the rules of what to balance first, uh, first when we come to a sodium, so sodium is in one substance in our reactants. It is also in only one substance in our product. So we can balance that one first, and that is putting a two in front of your sodium acetate, or yeah, sodium acetate. Uh, to balance two sodiums in your sodium carbonate, now you have two sodiums when you have two sodium acetates. All right, now carbon shows up in two spots here, all in two spots here, oxygen two spots, all three spots, hydrogen uh, is one spot up here, but it's in two spots down here. So there's no good second element to balance. All right, so then I would go to carbonates. I look at carbonate here. There's no carbonates on the other side. Then I go to my acetate. I have one acetate here, but since I put a two in front of the sodium acetates, I know that I have two acetates. So I like to balance the polyatomic ions if they stay together, if they're acetate here and they're acetate there, uh, you can balance those next. And that would come in quite handy because once you do this and then you check everything else, you're done. All right, so if we check our carbons, we have one carbon here, we have four carbons here. So on, on the uh, product side, we have five carbons total. Down here, we have four carbons plus one carbon, also five carbons total in the product side. We check our hydrogens. Hydrogens, we have two 
acetic acids. And so we have each one has four hydrogens, one there, three there. So we have eight hydrogens down here. Uh, we have six from our sodium acetate and two from our water. So we have a total of eight hydrogens. So eight hydrogens there and there. And then finally, we check our oxygens. We have three oxygens here. We have uh, four oxygens here. So we have seven oxygens. Down here, we have four oxygens. We have two oxygens. We have one oxygen. We have seven oxygens. And you see that you have a balanced chemical reaction. All right, so balance your sodium first. Then, if, then you balance your polyatomic ions that stayed together. You have your acetates. And if you balance your acetates, then you have a balanced chemical reaction. Uh, and since this is a chemical reaction, all chemical reactions are chemical changes. So this is a chemical change. If you wanted a physical change, you could say that uh, you stuck acetic acid in the freezer and now it is solid. Okay, so it's still acetic acid, but it is a solid. Or you could say that acetic acid freezes at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, that is a physical property of acetic acid. But you say... Acetic acid reacts with, anytime you say the word reacts, you're talking about a chemical reaction, a chemical change. So definitely know the difference between a chemical change and a physical change. Any chemical reaction or description of a chemical reaction, that is a chemical change slash chemical property. All right, sig figs, sig figs. So naming is huge. You're gonna to have to know how to get the formula from the name in order to balance a reaction. So you're talking a lot of points for naming. If you cannot name, you will lose a lot of points. Make sure you're able to name stuff correctly. All right, so number two is sig figs. Sig figs are on every test, on every lab. Sig figs are a lot of points not just on this test, but on every test, all right? At least the names, and most of the naming is done on this first uh, test, and naming doesn't really affect much of your grade after the first test, unlike sig figs every single test. 9.345 minus 9.005 divided by 9.811. All right, so you should get your calculator and you should do this. Make sure you know how to use your calculator. All right, so when you subtract, your calculator is going to say 0.34. Your calculator is rarely correct on sig figs. So is 0.34 the correct number of sig figs? No, it should have... When we do the subtraction, we have to give our answer to three sig figs, but more specifically, since we did a subtraction, we need three decimal places. All right, so three decimals minus three decimals, you have to give your answer to three decimals. Your calculator only gives 0.34. You have to put in the zero. So now you have 0.34. Now you're doing a division. So you're gonna give your answer to how many What are we doing when we do division? Sig figs. So this is three decimals and three sig figs here. This one's three decimals, but it is how many sig figs? Four. So this is three sig figs. This is four sig figs. Both are three decimals, but it doesn't matter how many decimals you have when you're doing a division. Adding and subtraction, decimals, multiplying, dividing, sig figs. All right, and so when you take your 0.34 and divide by 9.811, you get 0. Point, I don't know. What do you got? Is that the right number of sig figs? How many sig figs is that? That's only two sig figs, and so you should get 0. 0.03. Four, seven to three sig figs. All right, so again, we're not doing decimals when you do division, it's about sig figs. And so this is three sig figs, but it's how many decimals? 
four. Okay, so make sure you know the rules. Adding and subtraction, you only look at decimal places. Multiplying, dividing, you only look at sig figs. All right, so this time we're going to take the same numbers, but we're going to add the top two instead of subtracting the top two. All right, so we're going to take and get the same problem, except instead of subtracting, we are adding 9.345 plus 9.005 divided by 9.811. And I would like to put a zero in there. I want to change that question a little. All right. So how many sig figs will our answer have? The final answer, how many sig figs will the final answer have? I did change the question. I put a zero in there after the, it didn't change the number on your calculator because that's a zero. But usually there's a reason why I change stuff. And in this case, there is a reason why I changed it. All right. So how many sig figs am I going to give for my answer here? Five. All right. Why am I giving five? What do I get when I add these two numbers on top? 18.350. Why does that zero have to be there? Three decimals, three decimals. You have to have three decimals, so you have to add the zero. So now you're dividing by 9.8110. How many sig figs here? Five. And how many here? Five. Now, if I didn't change the uh, question, how many sig figs would the answer have been? Four. But that's why I changed the, the thing to zero, because when you add those two, you have th three decimals plus three decimals. You have to give three decimals. But now that's five sig figs divided by five sig figs, which gives you a one point. I don't know. What is it? I need more. Four? What number's here? Three. Is it three or four? Is the three rounded correctly? All right, 1.8703. All right, so you have five sig figs divided by five sig figs. This has to be five sig figs. All right, so now we're going to take our 8.12, add. 7.53 in parentheses, and then multiply that by 3.710. All right, so how many sig figs am I going to give my answer to? Four. All right, so again, two decimals plus two decimals. That's why you would give this answer to two decimals. All right, so that is 15.65 times 3.710. And so that's going to give you, I don't know, what do you got? 15.65. Zero six. All right, so that is the correct sig fig. So this problem really isn't what's the correct answer. It is what is the correct answer given sig figs, but also rounding. Make sure you're rounding things correctly. All right, and the next one's the exact same problem. 8.12 plus 7.53 times 3.710. How is this different? Now you got to follow your, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the order of operations. You have to multiply before you add. And if you plug this into your calculator, it will do it correctly. Uh, unless you do not have a scientific calculator. All scientific calculators know 
um, what to do first. So, so first, we're going to multiply these two numbers, and what is our answer going to have when we do this first multiplication? Three sig figs. Three sig figs times four sig figs. We give our answer to three sig figs. And what is that answer? 27.9. And now we are going to do what? Add. So our answer is going to have one decimal place. So you have two decimals plus one decimal. Your answer is going to have one decimal place. And this one is an interesting one. All right, so if you do it this way, your answer is 35.0. Did somebody, you know, 36.0. Did somebody come up with something else? There is another correct answer. Actually, the key does not give it as 36.0 because I do not round. 36.1 is the answer that I would give, but both answers are 100% full credit because this is a 9.3 something something. All right, so when you added it up, it came out to be 30. Six point thirty six point oh five something. All right, and so when you have to go to one decimal, then you would round that to a one. But if you rounded it first and then added it, then it would be the thirty six point zero. So either one is going to be one hundred percent full credit. So should you round it and plug in the numbers? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. I do it both ways, and both ways are full credit. All right, conversions. There will be a lot of conversions on the test. A lot of conversions on every test. Make sure you can do conversions. So 25 years. And we want to go to nanoseconds. All right, so you have 25 years, and now you have to know. What do you know about years? That is correct. One year. Why am I putting the one year on the bottom? Because it has to cancel. And again, okay, so one year is 365 days. A good question here that I really like is, how many sig figs in 365 days in a year? That is not infinite. All conversion factors are infinite, unless, of course, you know them, which is this one. That would mean that every year has 365 days. Is that true? No, that is not true. You all know that there is a February 29th that comes in occasionally. So sometimes there's 366. Most of the time it's 365. So what number has some uncertainty? The five has some uncertainty, which means it has how many sig figs? Three, all right? So all conversion factors have an infinite number of sig figs, unless, of course, you know that they don't. And this is one where you know that it does not. All right, so after uh, years and days, okay, so days we're going to go to what? 24 hours in a day. Day has to be on bottom to cancel. And so hours, then we know what about hours? So there are, well, some people know how many seconds in an hour, but I'm going to go with everybody knows how many minutes are in an hour. That is 60. All right. So there is 60 minutes in an hour. All right. And so then we need to get rid of minutes and go to seconds. And what do we know about minutes to seconds? Sixty seconds in a minute. All right, and then we go from seconds to nanoseconds. The main question here is, is the seconds to nanoseconds. So we have 60 seconds in a minute. All right, so now we have to have seconds here and we have to have nanoseconds here. All right, this is where you have to have your table memorized and know what N 
is equal to. And so if you have your table memorized, you know that n is equal to what? 10 to the minus 9. So if, all right, so 60 seconds we know is equal to a minute. We know 60 minutes is an hour. We know 24 hours is a day. Now, since we memorized our chart and we know that n is 10 to the minus 9, we know that ns is exactly the same as 10 to the minus 9s. So 10 to the minus 9. And I like to put a 1 times 10 to the minus 9. You don't have to. I like to put that in a scientific notation. All right, so here you'll know if you're using your calculator correctly uh, because you're going to multiply 25, 365, 24, 60, 60. And then if you're doing it this way, you're then you're going to divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. If you actually type that in as 1 times 10 to the minus 9, uh, it's going to then divide by 1 and then multiply by 10 to the minus 9. No, you divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. You either put in 1 e minus 9 or you put this in parentheses. Uh, because if you don't do one of those two things, it's going to divide by 1, which doesn't change anything, and it's going to multiply it by 10 to the minus 9. You're dividing by 10 to the minus 9. All right, and so how many sig figs am I giving my answer to? My answer will have how many sig figs? So the question is, how many sig figs in 25 years? That is two sig figs. That is not a counted number. That is a measured number. All right, so that's two sig figs. So that is the lowest number. Every other conversion factor besides that 365, every other conversion factor is an infinite number of sig figs. All right, so does anybody have a number? Seven point nine times ten to the seventeenth nanoseconds. Seven point nine times ten to the seventeenth nanoseconds. All right, so what is that symbol after the two seventy five? This little thing is called 275 what? Micrograms, all right? So micrograms has to be on bottom. Grams has to be on top because we have our chart and we know that micro is equal to what? to the negative 6. Okay, so I like to put 1 times 10 to the minus 6. I can multiply anything I want to by 1, and that doesn't change anything. So 10 to the minus 6 grams, micrograms, exactly the same amount. I want one microgram, but I gave you 10 to the minus 6 grams. Yes, that's one microgram. That's the same thing. All right, so micro cancels and now we don't want grams. The question says kilograms. So we have to get rid of grams. That makes it on bottom. We have to get kilograms. All right. So again, your chart, K, is memorized as 10 to the third. All right. I like to put 1 times 10 to the third, so I put it in scientific notation. All right. So your conversion factors are infinite number of sig figs. So you have three sig figs, infinite, infinite, three sig figs. And your answer is 2.75 times 10 to the minus 7 kilograms. All right, so make sure you can plug that into your calculator because when you're dividing, anytime you have scientific notation in the denominator, you either have to use parentheses or use your EE button. If you type it in, 1 times 10, divided by 1 times 10 to the third, for the last thing there, it is going to divide it by 1 and multiply it by 10 to the third. And that is not what you're telling it. You're telling it to divide by that. You would need parentheses. All right. Uh, part C, 
says 1.546 angstroms. All right, so an angstrom, one angstrom is one times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So an angstrom is a unit of length. It is how we measure our bond lengths. All right, so a bond length, a typical bond length between carbon and hydrogen is 1.546 angstroms. So it's some number of angstroms, 10 to the minus 10 meters. All right, but meters is not the unit that was asked for. Millimeters was asked for. So we have to get rid of meters and we have to have millimeters. So again, you have milla mo memorized from your table, 10 to the minus three. All right, so you have millimeters on top, you have millimeters on bottom. Uh, one has the M and one has the 10 to the minus three because M is equal to 10 to the minus three. All right, you got four sig figs, infinite, infinite, four sig figs. 1.546 times 10 to the minus 7 millimeters. So make sure, I don't care how you do it. This is the way I will always do it. I will never do it any other way. You can do it any way you want, as long as you're showing what you're doing and getting the right answer. I don't care. All right, a density question. We got a mass of a 100 mil graduated cylinder. And that is 25.32 grams. So you graduated cylinder. 25.32 grams. All right. So then we pour 25 mils of an unknown liquid in there. All right. So then we put 25 mils of unknown liquid. All right, so we put the liquid in the graduated cylinder, we read it, it's 25 mils, and then we stick it on the balance, and now our graduated cylinder plus unknown liquid has a mass of 40.50 grams. Calculate the density. All right, so the... Definition of density is your mass or your volume. So those are your dimensions for density. That is your mass over your volume. All right, and the units that we're using here are grams for mass and milliliters for volume, but it could be any unit of mass, any unit of volume. All right, and so your density is the mass. We need the mass of the liquid not the mass of the graduated cylinder, which is 25.32, not the mass of the graduated cylinder and the liquid, which is 40.50. We need just the mass of the liquid. All right, so we have to subtract the graduated cylinder. So subtract the 25.32 minus the 25.32, and we see that that liquid has a mass of 15.18. And the volume of that liquid is right there. The volume is, you just read the graduated cylinder. It is 25.0 milliliters. All right. And so 
you have your four sig figs divided by your three sig figs, and you give your answer to three sig figs, and that is 0.6. Zero. Anybody pushing buttons? Is that a seven? Seven grams per milliliter. All right. If you are doing so, that's exactly what we did in lab, except we used a 10 mil graduated cylinder, but the same. We weighed the cylinder, we put some volume in there, we read the volume, we weighed it again, we got our density of our unknown liquid. Uh, the part B is density for the solid. All right, so you have the mass there of a beaker. So the beaker has a mass of 102.52, part B. So your beaker has a mass of 102.52 grams. Uh, now you have your beaker in your unknown. And that has a mass of 135.42 grams. All right, and then you have your graduated cylinder that has water in it. So it has 53.2 mils of water in it. All right, so then we dump our solid in there. So now our graduated cylinder uh, has a volume of 56.8 milliliters, and that's with the water. The water's still in there, but now it's our unknown solid. All right, so again, we want the density. And so again, we have to have the mass and we have to have the volume. So the density is the mass over the volume. Do we want the mass of the beaker? No. Do we want the mass of the beaker and unknown yet? No. We want the mass of just the unknown. Do we want the volume of the water? No, we're not looking for the density of water. Do we want the volume of the water and the solid? No, we want the volume of just the solid. All right, so if you have the beaker and then you have your beaker and your unknown, you have to subtract the mass of the beaker. All right, so your mass is 135.42. That's beaker and unknown. Get rid of the beaker, which is 102.52. And now we have the mass of the solid. Thirty-two point ninety. And sometimes it's better to do it this way because then you'll have the sig figs, right? All right. So if you uh, sometimes it'll say, what is the mass of your uh, unknown, and you get 32.90. The reason why I'm asking that specifically is because you have to have two decimals minus two decimals. You have to have two decimals. The calculator will only say 32.9. It has to be two decimals, 32.90. Your volume is 56.8. That is the water and the solid. We don't want the water in the solid. We've got to get rid of the water. The water was 53.2. And so that is a 3.6 milliliters. So your volume of your solid is 3.6 milliliters. And that is the correct sig figs because you have one decimal minus one decimal, one decimal. So now you're going to take these two numbers and divide them. All right. And so you're going to have four sig figs. Divide by two sig figs, you're going to give your answer to two sig figs, 9.1 gram per milliliter. All right, so it'll definitely be uh, questions on density. All right, so then in part C, it asks for what is the mass of unknown solid that has a volume of 10 milliliters? I want the mass that has a volume of 10 milliliters. So what mass of solid, unknown solid, has a volume equal to 10 mils? So density is equal to mass over volume. All right, and so we need to solve for the mass. All right, so we multiply both sides by the volume. And so we see that when you take your volume times your density, you get the mass. 
And so in order to get this, the volume was given. It was 10 mils. The density is what we calculated, 9.1 grams per mil. And when you push the buttons, you get 91 grams. Milliliters cancel milliliters. So this one was a nice question because it gave the units of milliliters and that's what we needed. Part D says, What volume of liquid has a mass of 10 megagrams? All right, so now we need to solve for mass. So mass when the volume is equal to 10.0 megagrams. And this is for the liquid, which had a density of 0 0.607 grams per milliliter. All right, so now we need to solve for mass. So we have that no. we have the question is what volume, not what mass, has a mass. Of course, this is the mass. It's in grams, the volume. We already answered the question, what is the mass? All right, so anytime you have grams, that's, of course, the mass. All right, so we have to solve for volume. So we're right here. And we have to solve for the volume. The volume, then, when you divide both sides by the density, the volume is the mass over the density. You take the mass, divide by density, and you have the volume. But before we can do that, our units of mass have to be the same. And so we have to convert our 10 megagrams into just grams. So 10 megagrams... To get rid of megagrams, you have to know from your chart that mega is 10 to the 6th. That is a million, that is mega. And so in grams, you have 1.00 times 10 to the 7th grams. So now we have our mass in the correct units. 1.00 times 10 to the 7th grams divided by our density, which we calculate in part A, 0 0.607 grams per milliliter. And that will give us our volume in milliliters. And that is... One point six five times ten to the seventh milliliters. All right. Uh, for naming, make sure you know your rules for naming because I may make something up like a brand new element, X, and then the XO2 minus 2 is called x -ite. All right, and the key is, of course, the last three letters of the name. All right, so once you see it, you know that you can go to X8 because we know the difference is in oxygen. So XO3 minus 2, remember going from it to 8, all right, you're going to add the oxygen here, but the charge never changes. If we wanted the per X8, we have to add another oxygen, an XO4 minus 2. And if we wanted the hypo X8, we have to get rid of an oxygen, which is XO minus 2. All right, so the ones that you have memorized are here. You have a bunch of eights memorized, and so you have all the eights, the hypoites, and the per eights. All right, but I can give you any of those, like this one, x eight, and you can get all four as well. It's the exact same rules. All right, and so now when you want to make an acid out of the uh, per eight, we know it's the per eight because it is a per x ic acid. Ic acid comes from eight. And so to make it neutral, it is H2XO4. That is your per X8, per X8, but now it's an acid, so it is a per 
x ick acid because eight goes to ick acid and ammonium hypoxite so a hypoxite is right here Ammonium is memorized as NH4+, plus, and so you have your neutral molecule has to have NH4. You have to have two of them. You must use the parentheses and then XO for ammonium hypoxite. All right, we will do the remaining five questions tomorrow, uh, six questions. Uh, and if you have any other questions, uh, you can email them, bring them, ask them. I'll go through whatever questions you want to go through.